Hello, welcome back to video number three of Victoria 3's portion of my England to America Paradox Interactive Historical Playthrough Mega Series. Playing now and for a while now as the United States of America. This is video number three. I'm Admiral Jedi. This video is going to be dedicated quite a bit to the United States uh, growth onto the international frame as a global power. I want to sort of whine a little bit first, though, if you'll put up with that, uh, about some historical inaccuracies uh, so far. And the very first one is glaring to the Northwest, and that is we do not own Alaska. And uh, we probably never will. The event to purchase Alaska from Russia never came up. So we never bought it from them. They're not really interested in selling. And I have no idea who Athabasca is. Uh, so that sucks. We are probably never going to have Alaska. Not terribly interested in going to war um, with Russia over that. As uh, that would probably not go our way all that well. Which uh, is lame, but yeah. So we're going to skip that for now. What we do have that is historically somewhat accurate is Hawaii as a protectorate. We're going to go ahead and work to annex them as a territory during this video. More on that later. Uh, this is still whining about historical inaccuracies. Something I whined about at the end of the last video that we're going to whine about even more right now is our lack of very, very famous and time appropriate standard oil company uh, we really need that and I'm gonna work on that uh, here shortly so uh, a little bit less whining right now a little bit more whining on that later on uh, and the other thing that we're gonna do is just basically clean up the economy I'm gonna be doing a lot of this off video I've got tons of money I'm not spending enough money I'm not building enough stuff meanwhile I have a million states that are living below uh, standard of living. Not sure that this was or wasn't uh, historically accurate. I'm sure that it probably was actually. So we're going to go ahead and get that cleaned up. But what we are going to focus on right away is this lovely little piece of island here, Cuba. And in 1898, America went to war over this with Spain, the Spanish American War. Now, what would be really ideal here is if we could offer to support Cuba's independence. They are not at all interested in that, uh, which kind of sucks, uh, not only for gameplay's perspective, but also because it's not historically accurate. So three things were going on with Cuba around this time. One, it was a Spanish territory. That is true. Uh, we can see here, if we open diplomacy that they are indeed a puppet of Spain. Now, so there's a few things that America had an interest in Cuba for. One is the Cubans did desire independence, historically speaking. You can see here that they really don't at this point. I don't even know how we could work that up, or if we could. The new um, 1.7 and sphere of influence, which I have, because I love me some paradox. All the... Um, power box and all that sort of thing and and um, what, what is this uh, you know, leverage that you can have sorry I struggled for that for so long mechanic was just not really seeing how to make that work here maybe because I just am too dumb to know that that if we could spend some time like making them want to be more libertarious libertarian I don't really know so historically speaking uh, Cuba did desire independence. And the second thing that was going on, America had commercial interests in Cuba. Now, maybe we could begin to simulate those um, by proposing uh, foreign investment. But, uh, let's see, we'd have to do that in Spain. So, eh, I don't even know if Spain would be interested in doing that with us. Probably not. That's not Spain, that's France. Uh, proposed investment agreement. No, they're, they're really disinterested. 
Why are they disinterested? But it's just, they're just, meh. They just base generally don't like us. Okay, whatever. So, in addition to Cuba's historically accurate desire for independence and America's historically accurate commercial interest in Cuba, which we unfortunately don't have, there was a third piece, which is the governor installed in Cuba was really hated and a really cruel person. And so Americans could basically say, oh, whoa, those, um, those wailing, poor, horrible Cubans who desire freedom from their overlord, evil overlord Spain. And so what they did is they sent a ship here, one of our big ships. We've got some decent ships, right? Okay, let's see what our military looks like. Not too bad. We got ironclads. We're pretty modern in terms of uh, our our navy. And um, they sent a ship, and to this day, nobody truly knows what happened, but it blew up. And so everyone thought, oh, Spain attacked us. They blew up one of our ships, bad Spain, and we went to war. Uh, now, there's some a lot of people, I think, who believe that the ship ran into a mine and blew up. So um, we are basically going to go to war with Spain. Whether or not we're going to go to war with them right now or in eight years depends on one critical factor, and that is Great Britain. Now, that is not a historically accurate crit critical factor, and here's why. I can go to war with Spain right now, and we could demand that they liberate Cuba. And this would not be too tough of a battle. Uh, we could probably win this. I have simulated this a few times. However, oddly enough, what happens is Dynam will join Spain as an ally. Mm, okay, fine. Um, and the Ottoman Empire will also pile on and be like, yeah, we, we have literally no interest in Cuba whatsoever. And we're halfway on the other side of the world. But why not? Let's fight you. Um, and so that's a little bit odd and stupid and suckish. So what I've done is gone ahead and allied with Great Britain, which I'm going to do right now. Now, a full-on alliance, not super historically accurate. We do work with Britain as our allies shortly in the World War I time frame coming up, so I'm not feeling too bad about doing that right now. What we're going to do for the time being is get allied with Great Britain. I'm sure we can go ahead and let that happen here. Okay, alliance accepted. We're gonna let the ta the time. The, ew, excuse me. We are going to let the clock roll a little bit. Get as close to 1898 as we can. Clean up all this other stuff. Hopefully, bring Standard Oil onto the scene, and uh, then try to attack Spain and liberate Cuba. Okay, let's do it. Now, before we uh, come to the aid of our future communist brothers. Let's take a look at oil in general and what we need to bring standard oil to bear. Um, I'll gladly sack one of these companies, these kind of stupid filler companies. Um, we're going to keep Carnegie Steel. We can go ahead and kill. Well, we've got. Uh, I don't want to kill a premium or a, a prosperous company. Although, here's uh, Cramp and so. Ships. You know what? We're going to go ahead and keep them. And we'll go ahead and kill the. Um, New York Premium Textiles, N not, not right now, until, until we have eligibility for Standard Oil. Okay, but what do we need for them? We need to have, let's see, any American state, strategic reason, Midwest, and we need to have an oil rig at uh, level 5. Okay, so do we have an oil rig at level 5? I don't think we do. What have we got? And it's got to be in the Midwest. Oh, we have one in Texas. Isn't Texas Midwest? Or are they considered Great Plains? Uh, let's see. Strategic regions. Oh, they are Dixie. Well, that sucks. 
I I didn't realize that. Okay, we're we're one state away. Boop, boop. Even though Texas is a huge oil uh, generating state, that kind of sucks. Um, but supposedly Standard Oil was in the Midwest. Okay. All right. Even though we're a couple of decades too late, I'm pleased to establish a Standard Oil Company. Um, so that's pretty cool. Pushed through a few technologies and got our oil usage a lot higher. I'm doing a war with Britain right now uh, on the Indian subcontinent. I don't know if this is historically accurate. I'm pretty sure that American involvement was not historically accurate. But anyway, uh, so we're going to go ahead and help them out with that. It's 1894, and then I'm going to probably... Once they're free of all this stuff, uh, go after Spain and Cuba, so stay tuned. The year is 1896, almost 1897, and we're pretty close to being able to declare war, what, what will be considered the Spanish-American War. Britain looks like they're going to join, uh, let's see, with war goals, what do they want? They want to take a treaty port in Shandong. Okay, whatever. Don't even know what that means, but, you know, let's go. And so, okay, Great Britain sides with us. Now, I've done a couple practice rounds on this. Persia is looking like they're gonna go in. Dainam went in. Ottomans went in. Now, that's just odd to me. Um, okay, so it's kind of a big war at this point. Uh, which is fine. I did a practice run on this where it was just me. And, um, you know, and I was able to hold them off. Because basically if you go straight to Cuba, uh, we, we can make it work. Which we're going to do. But for now, I want to get some of these additional war goals added. I thought I could do that. Um, yeah, there we go. All right, in addition to Cuba, we are going to um, take Puerto Rico. I think I can do that. Um, liberate, that's 30. I don't really want to liberate it, though. So, Cuba, we ended up liberating, historically speaking. Um, but Puerto Rico... Um, Alright, we want to transfer the Philippines. I think we ended up taking the Philippines. I'm not quite sure. Um, let's go ahead and conquer Puerto Rico. And... How do we want to do the Philippines? Um, I think what we can do is transfer subject. Yes. Uh, can we do... Do we have enough to make primaries out of all these? I do believe we do. So we're going to go ahead and do this and uh, get to war with them. Now, the first thing I really want to do is make sure that we're going to be able to take Cuba. Now, Cuba has no troops on the ground, which is really kind of dumb uh, from their perspective, but whatever. And um, there you go. In terms of the Philippines, I'm not really sure what I can do with this. Um, we can't do a naval invasion until Red War occurs. So, okay, fair enough. Uh, but, okay, so let's see what we can do with, with the military. Uh, alright, there's France we can go to. I'm not really interested in going to France. Western New Guinea? Where is this? Is that here? That's probably just because somebody else is fighting against Great Britain. One of the war belligerents. Oh, Spanish Eastern New Guinea. Hmm, interesting. 
Um, you know what? Why not? Let's go ahead and send one of our military units over to there. We'll go ahead and send... We have folks. We should have folks in the Pacific. Yeah, so there's two stationed in Dixie. That's kind of lame. And we're still mobilizing, whatever. I, I'm not even sure that that matters, to be honest with you. You can seem to be able to move these people around whether you're mobilizing or not. Western New Guinea front, Western New Guinea eastern. Let's just, just send one. That's fine. Where did that even go to? Okay, cool. So that's kind of a long ways for them. And then we're just going to get ready for this, um, for this naval invasion in Cuba. Let's fast forward to that. Okay, here we go. Uh, war is declared, so we can go ahead and move out. Now, we'll go ahead and do our naval invasion of Cuba. And, uh, bring in the army. Let's go. So, they have no troops sitting here, or no ships sitting here, and this is the primary war goal. So, mm, a little confusing. But uh, previously, when I did a uh, trial run, they had, um, uh, it's funny, the Ottoman Empire tried to invade Washington, D.C., which was uh, pretty funny. And so I was able to hold them off with decent navy. So this one just kind of looks like it's going to be a cakewalk, unfortunately. Um, and then you can see the little, there it is, boom, Cuba invaded, done. So that's... Um, I don't know, not terribly challenging. Uh, maybe I should have challenged myself a little bit more. So, I mean, we see, if we even just now see the war goal, sorry, in seven days, they're gonna change by 147, and we're gonna change by 0.37. Okay, fine. Uh, and then 50% enemy controls war goals? Yeah, so, I mean, we have Cuba already. At this point, we can see about the Philippines. We might as well. I haven't even gotten to, um, to, uh, what is this again? Spanish, yeah, what was it, like East Bohemia or something like that, I'm not, I'm not making any sense, alright, anyway, Guinea, excuse me, uh, so we can go ahead and also, I mean, I don't see any reason why we should not just use the same people, um, this guy's going to land in Cuba. We're going to basically tell him, like, you know what, bro? Let's instead do another naval invasion. That was so much fun, the other one that we did. Uh, let's go ahead and do uh, Philippine Mindanao. And, uh, heck, why not just use even the exact same shit? So, 14 weeks later. Okay, fine. So what we're going to do is just basically keep an eye on Cuba... Um, I'm not sure what this dude's doing. He's traveling. There we go. A little bit of lag. He's traveling slowly. And so we've got lots of troops just sitting here doing nothing. Might as well have this guy, you know, come and guard us on the East Coast. And these guys, there's got to be some kind of front we can move them to. Um... Western New Guinea front? No. What's this? Yeah, I kind of like this. We'll head on in here to Vietnam. Right? Okay, it's going to take a little while. And we'll just uh, get troops engaged. And I don't see this going badly in any way. Spain, I think, is just paranoid that Britain's going to land on the colonial side. So they've got their... 224 units sitting in Iberia waiting for us to do something we're not going to do. But, you know, such is war, I suppose. Uh, I don't see this taking very long or being very difficult, so let's uh, fast forward to the end. The naval invasion of the Philippines was successful. And so we're making our way downtown uh, pretty quickly here. So we should have the Philippines under control fairly soon. Fast forward to the end, and we are done. So everybody is coming home. 
The Spanish-American War is over. Cuba is a free nation. Puerto Rico is an unincorporated territory of the United States, which it remains to this day, oddly enough. And uh, Britain got a Shandong Treaty port out of it, which they let sit forever until I went over and said, okay, everybody, let's uh, make this happen. So that is the end of the Spanish-American War, and really one of the last vestiges of the uh, great Spanish Empire that existed and plagued me so hard in EU4, but really is uh, not all that difficult at all in uh, this. And I have way too much money still. I need to, I don't know, do something, do some building or something like that and uh, spend more money. Now, while the majority of this video will be focused around the international scene, including trying to figure out something to do with World War I, come the time, which is coming up here in 10-15 uh, years, it's probably worth looking at what was going on politically in the country. Probably the biggest thing we could talk about at this point was the rise of labor and labor unions uh, at this point. Now, we can't pass any laws related to this. Child labor was actually allowed until like 1938 or something like that kind of crazy um, and then we will get to um, women's suffrage here hopefully soon so the only thing that I can really come close to that let's look around at some things that we're not going to do um, we're going to leave racial segregation in place like we mentioned uh, in the previous video separation of church and state we're just going to leave I should really go for professional army because the United States had a professional standing army for a while as opposed to just those militia model. Um, but we really can't make any change to that um, because I guess we don't have somebody like the, the, the armed forces in government or something like that. Uh, so we'll get back to that. Um, home affairs, guaranteed liberties. I mean, I could, I could do this. Um... Who's opposing that? Uh, that's kind of a little weird. Um, we're going to keep uh, interventionism. Uh, that's a personal choice on my part. In, in my opinion, the laissez-faire, which I'd love to move to, really, we're, we never were there. Um, the primary uh, funding mechanism for the United States prior to the income tax, to the federal government, I mean, was uh, tariffs and everything. That's hardly a laissez-faire free trade kind of a deal. So we're going to leave protectionism uh, and interventionism in place. Um, per capita taxation, we're going to leave it in place. I did recently pass commercialized tax. I'd love to get rid of, uh, no. I'd love to move to no colonial affairs because we're not doing any more colonization at this point, but we've got nobody supporting it. And then dedicated versus local, yeah, we could probably move to... Uh, a dedicated police force. Um, yeah, we'll go ahead and do this one first. Why not? Pretty easy chance to do that. Uh, as the cities did get crowded, uh, crime really was on the rise, and they got kind of blighted and nasty. Um, in terms of health system, I'd love to move to public health insurance. We may do that. My research is a little wonky on how that came to being the first public health systems were really like public military health um for navy uh, and everything to keep track uh, to keep healthy our, our veterans so the other thing i'm going to be working on is probably either wage subsidies or old age pension probably wage subsidies because a big part of what was going on at this time was the rise of the unions the rise of the trade unions and so i got that um what was that other law I just, I just went for? Uh, local police force out of the way, or, or dedicated police force. We will go ahead and fast forward to that, or fast forward that, and get back to... Um, I'd love to do workers' protections, because that was definitely uh, something that was the unions were working on really hard. So we're going to try and get back to uh, more union effects as soon as that uh, police law passes. Something else that happened around this time frame, actually slightly before this time frame, 
is the French started building the Panama Canal. Uh, they started around the 1890 time frame, maybe even a little before that, and basically ran out of money and couldn't do it. Tried to sell it off to the United States for an exorbitantly high price, uh, and the United States basically said, thanks, no thanks, uh, picked it up for a lower price, but then once they picked it up, Colombia, because Panama as a country did not exist, as it we see here, uh, Colombia was like, okay, well, you paid France, but you still need to pay us, too. And America was like, Ugh. And right around that time, the state of Panama declared independence and was like, we'll let you build the canal. So anyway, we're going to see if we can go to war again, even though infamy is pretty high. Um, so I may let that one sit for a little bit, but let's see what this will do if we liberate the country of Panama. Um, will that give me a hit? Will anybody join in on that? Russia's going to join in on that, which is stupid. Um... Now, I might be able to talk Great Britain into doing that again. Are they still my ally? Because they went through, like, some religious turmoil and everything like that. I'm not even sure if we're still... Yeah, we're still allied with them. Um, maybe we'll let infamy decrease. Um, let's, you know, let's go ahead and give it a shot and see what happens Yeah, if we do that. We're going to help liberate Panama from Colombia. Um, again, Russia may join. So let's see what's going to happen here. Okay, so we get the uh, diplomatic... Pl they, didn't, they didn't accept the demand, of course. So we're gonna let this. We're gonna just keep letting the clock run a little bit, and uh, I'll bore you to death with that one. But it should be coming up here pretty quickly, and see if uh, Russia's gonna join. All right, now I can talk. So I could like two countries into into it. Let's see. Great Britain is offering us their support. Okay, that's nice. Uh, in exchange for conquer Antioquia in the Andes. Sure, why not? Um, and then who else sided with me? Oh, the Philippines. Okay. Uh, so far, Russia's not really interested. So, okay, fair enough. Who was the other people, person that was going to join? Oh, Mexico. Mexico wants in on this action. Alright, well, we don't need you right now. So, let's go ahead and just let this roll. Peru, Bolivia sides with them. Right, we'll get everybody mobilized. Okay, it looks like Russia's going to sit this one out. They're not even on the fence. Or, I mean, they're not even leaning towards. Okay. So, um... What's this? A secession movement. Uh, okay. I didn't even know secessions could, could happen. afro Caribeño, Interesting. I want it, that's gotta be in Puerto Rico. Um, okay. So, let's go ahead and get this war started. We're gonna fast forward this. And, uh, free Panama! Okay, we had a naval landing, uh be pretty much immediately successful in Panama, and so we're now pushing through into uh, uh, into Colombia a little bit further. Are we, or somebody's redoing a naval landing again? Oh, they took it back from us. Okay, lovely. <clears throat> uh, didn't see that one coming, which kind of sucks. Where did we even go to? Um, so we need to do another naval landing. 
again and take it again um pretty frustrating not gonna lie so basically what happened was a zero percent front opened up here here on costa rica and i'm zooming some dudes down there and they're like oh we took the whole thing boom we completely invalid even though i was fighting down here in colombia and for whatever reason um they they pushed us out they pushed us immediately out those, those uh, mechanics are a little odd to be honest with you so a little bit of complaining there i mean boom now we're back again we took it back over again so see you see here it's, it's happening again there's a zero front here which they'll move troops in and go boop and just totally take it uh okay and then the, ignore the fact that i completely own this down here so i guess if i get troops moved in there and this is what i try to do is get troops moved down to that zero point front as quickly as possible um but see them they're coming up they're gonna come up they're gonna hit this zero point front before i can get there it becomes a negative 100 they're gonna push on it and watch they'll invalidate it right away and then i'll be pushed out let's see if it happens i'm coming i'm coming hold on all right, so I had an ally get in there. Oh, there's battle. Okay, so somehow we stopped it like just in time. From, but that would have happened again, uh, which is really kind of stupid. And so then we took this Costa Rica area and then, you know, basically, okay, everything's okay. So fine, I can go ahead and actually redirect this guy. Oh, he's in travel uh, because we've got a... Uh, a secession movement that occurred up here in Puerto Rico. Yeah, why not? We've got tons of mobilized troops. Uh, I guess we need to do another another naval landing. Okay, so we'll go ahead and take care of that. And in the meantime, war with Costa Rica, I'm sure, will be just fine. I think Britain even joined. Did they join? Uh, maybe not. No, they didn't. Thought they said they were gonna join. Oh, that's kinda weird. Anyway, what's this? Our country is in a state of civil war. Oh. All right, um, sorry to have you just be listening to my, some people tell me like, dude, you play on the, with the pause button. Press too long and we wanna see actual gameplay. So, okay, there you go. Well, we crushed Puerto Rico again. Uh, so, anyway, just some warfare stuff. This is the international episode, after all. And we're probably not going to get too close to, unfortunately, to um, World War One. Yeah, whatever, don't really care. So, uh, there you go. Okay, fast forward to capitulation. Uh, this, apparently, is the state that... Great Britain conquered. They kind of edged their way in there. Forgot about that. Uh, okay. Oops. Anyway, Panama is free. And what we're going to immediately do is take the decision to survey the Panama Canal. Now, that's going to give us a big hit to bureaucracy. It's only for 12 months, so I think I'm just going to eat it because i've got money just coming out my eyeballs i'm not building fast enough i'm just i don't know it's like i i've run into a situation where we've run out of people really uh okay i've got 1.5 million peasants which you know okay fair enough but in terms of unemployed there are only 58.2 thousand people unemployed in the entire country i mean that's so every building in every state is basically low on manpower because there's not enough people of course i haven't come up with a building that's yet low on manpower but anyway take my word for it okay there we go um and 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 other than building in the states specifically building in the states where there's a fairly high peasant count. Uh, we can't really do anything. So I'm going to have to start really clamping down on 
the technologies that um, free up labor. All right, so we're going to move forward with the Panama Canal, and I'm just going to take the hit on the money because I don't care. Okay, the Panama Canal survey completed. Um, so let's see. We're going to make an offer. There was a cash payment. It was like $40 million to um, make the Panama Canal. So that's been added as a journal entry. Any American state any building uh okay can we do that i think i've i've done this before with the um here we go acquire land in panama okay and we need to have gdp good relations with panama and then it gives us thirty thousand dollars of government expenses oh darn we have the money Okay, that's fine. And then, so we have the state now, and we need to go ahead and build the Panama Canal. So, okay, uh, fine, there we go. Now, interestingly enough, and completely ahistorical, Russia's gone to war against Britain, my ally, uh, to get them to do a few random things transfer crucial states give independence to ireland right, yeah there we go ireland jamaica etc etc so i threw in a hey, um i'll go ahead and help you how about you transfer this lovely little alaska over to me um and so we're gonna go for it um it's looking pretty tight but maybe i can take advantage of the fact that the ai doesn't know how to wage war um, and, uh, see what we can do. So, uh, unfortunately, fighting Russia in a land battle is never a good idea, right? Um, uh, what are they doing? They're fighting over, like, Morocco or something like that? I don't think Great Britain should have this land anyway. All right, so, uh, this is going to be a big, long, tough battle. I'm not going to keep talking through this one. Let's just fast forward and see what happens. The war with Russia ended pretty well. It took a, took a while. Britain and I kind of, we worked it together. We, we held them off. And uh, I ended up taking this um, Russian Alaska, no, now American Alaska, and ended up doing a, a naval landing here and took basically all of eastern Russia. And then they sent all these troops over like, we better stop them. And I just went like, hold, and like put myself into a full defensive mode. And the war ticked down, and, you know, there you go. Paying attention again to the domestic scene, I said I was going to work on getting wage subsidies or something passed. Um, because we, I wanted to focus on the rise of trade unions, labor negotiations, and all that sort of thing. Um, we've spent a lot of time on the international aspect in this video, which is what I did want to do. Um, so I think I'm gonna cut it here, actually. Uh, we'll spend the fourth and final video uh, really in the 10s, 20s, and 30, early 30s, talking about America the global power, and also see what we can do to simulate uh, the Roaring Twenties and the Great Depression and all that sort of thing. Um, but for now, done a lot of talking, done a lot of warring. Um, I do think it's interesting that uh, Great Britain is waging war against Austria, which is pretty close to what World War I was, except for there's no Ottoman Empire involved, Russia's not involved, all that sort of thing. Um, and France and Britain hate each other, which is kind of not historically accurate, at least at this time. It's not. So uh, let's go ahead and cut it. I want to say thanks to everybody for watching America on the international scene. And uh, next time, Victoria 3, the final Victoria 3, America the great power. And, uh, and our riches to rags story. Hopefully we'll see what we can do. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.